What's up everybody on the mangoes? You are awesome today. We're going to go over false patch 13.3 to see what all changed. We start off with new hero skin, Shogun Kalari. Looks quite good. This is not a skin they made themselves. I went and took a look at the Unreal Engine and this was labeled as the tough skin. It was an unreleased skin for Kalari that Epic made. Still pretty cool. I think Shogun makes a little more sense than tough. I don't know why that's tough. I guess just because it's metallic. I don't know. Whatever. Got a lot of new ward skins. If you're into ward skins, I'm not. I personally don't give two shits what my ward looks like as long as it pings when people come through. And it does. So if you're into collections and you just want to have everything like a Pokemon trainer, then yeah, ward skins. There you go. Two new items coming to the game. Got the Ring of Rejuvenation, a unique passive heal for 8% of your maximum health over four seconds after being affected by hard crowd control. Unique passive, 25% endurance, so that's CC duration, you you get CC'd for less time. 450 HP, 50 energy armor, 10 CDR, and it costs 2,800 gold. Now, this gives you another option for energy armor whenever you're building into green. Before, you always had to go with Unicorn Mantle. Uh, I, it's called Unyielding Mantle. I call it Unicorn Mantle. Just deal with it. And uh, it's pretty nice. See, Unyielding Mantle, you could completely, you could activate it to present, prevent yourself from getting CC'd at all. This gives you an option that's a little easier to use. You get that heal whenever you do receive hard CC. So it only works on stuns and such. It doesn't work, or stuns, or what do they call them? Suppressions or whatever. So it doesn't work on slows, but pretty good item. Nice to see, nice to see another option to build into for energy armor. And then another energy armor item, Fountain of Invigoration. This has a unique passive, increase all healing received by 30%. This includes self-healing, lifesteal, and you know health regen like Chimera has. You get 450 HP, 1.5 health regen, so it buffs itself. 50 energy armor, 10 CDR, and it also costs 2,800 gold. I like seeing this. I like seeing more options. Everybody just pretty much uses the same builds. It's like bail armor, unyielding mantle is what you go for late game armor on anything that you're building green on. This gives you a few more options. Now let's see some more, uh, some more physical options too. That would be nice to see. Optimization bug fixes. Speaking of the unicorn mantle, fix an issue causing the active being unable to be used while under the effects of crowd control. So you were supposed to be able to use this to break CC, but you weren't able to before. This might make unyielding mantle a little more easy to use. Um, well, it'll definitely make it easier to use, but I don't know if I would take this over one of these other green items. I think I'll probably still... That's unfortunate. I think I'll still <laughs> stick with Unicorn Mantle over these two new green items, even though they're going to be the new hotness. Maybe if you want to build like just full on armor, 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 then you can do this. Uh, Heroes, Greystone, Assault the Gates. His right mouse button is jump forward. Fix an issue that caused the camera to offset slightly after using the ability. Never noticed it. I don't play a lot of Greystone anymore. I played him at first because he's really easy, you know. Press W, left click, win. I haven't played him a whole lot since. I haven't noticed this issue. Grim fixed an issue that caused Grim.exe to be unable to basic attack or use abilities. Quite an issue there. Glad they fixed it. Deflect.exe, that's his shield that he can activate to block an ability. Fixed an issue causing the ability to not reduce the cooldown of Blast.exe, his Q, the thing you throw out there and it displaces people when successfully blocking an ability. So it used to be, well, it's supposed to work. If you block an ability with his deflection shield, it would lower his cooldowns. And I guess it wasn't lowering the Q. Now it does. Good stuff. Morgesh, Festering Toxins. This is her passive. They added passives to all the heroes in Fault. Hers is every time she just deals damage, she puts a dot on you. Which, she's not overpowered. You think, you, you hear that and you think, oh god, Morgesh must be crazy. But she hasn't been overpowered. With the changes, maybe she will be now. <laughs> Fix an issue causing the ability to not scale properly with levels. So apparently it wasn't scaling properly. I don't know if it was scaling too much or not enough. If it was not enough and they fixed it and brought it back online, she might be a lot more dangerous to deal with now and be a big old pain in my ass again. Uh, they fixed some description errors. Who cares? 
Muriel, Consecrated Ground. That's her bubble shield. Fix an issue causing the second shield to sometimes be larger than it should. So in Fault, when you throw the shield, they get a shield with their, in the bubble. And then when the bubble pops, they get another shield. And I guess the second one was a little too big. Her shields really are pretty effective, uh, especially early game. I really don't play a lot of Muriel. I didn't play her in Paragon. I don't play her in Predecessor, Overprime, or Fault. She just never has really appealed to me. I am a support main, but just Muriel just never has never done it for me. Maybe I'll try her out now. I mean, this isn't something that would lead me to try her out, but I should just learn Muriel just for the sake of learning Muriel. Their CDR formula, they're adjusting the uh, cooldown reduction formula. Um, I don't understand all this math shit or what any of this means, but hopefully it'll be better for the game. Uh, favor mini rework. The current favor system's value is increasing exponential. Ugh. Let me try that again. The current favor system's value is increasing exponentially with the amount of completed items the player has, leading to the system feeling underwhelming in the early game and spiking too hard on certain roles later into the game. To fix this issue, we're moving to a more linear system that should give the player the same amount of stats no matter what time it is in the game. Being able to use favor leads being able to use favor leads without items should also increase the importance of getting Raptor early as the favor given to each ally can be used immediately to affect their power level in the game. So currently the favor system is, Fault is a very snowball -y game and the favor system contributes quite a bit to that. You don't feel the effects of favor early on, but once the enemy team gets Raptor a couple times and you didn't, you feel it pretty hard. It doesn't matter how much you farmed up and how many items you have. If the enemy carry has a lot more favor than you, they're, they're going to be at competitive or maybe even better than you. And um, yeah, it's, it's led to fault being very snowbally. Hopefully this favor rework will, will help out a little bit. So now the favor, it used to be uh, certain items would give you like, Maybe you get attack speed, maybe you get attack power, maybe you get health, whatever. Now it just all, all favor gives the same thing and you get it every time. So blue aspect, 2.5 energy power, red aspect, 1.5 physical power, white aspect, one CDR. I can see that becoming a problem real quick if the, if the support gets just crazy CDR. Green aspect, 20 health, purple aspect, plus one physical pin. I don't know how I feel like about that because that kind of dissuades energy damage. Um, anybody who uses energy damage from taking a purple aspect, which I don't ever take purple aspect anyway. I think I've taken it once on the jungle for the ability to pass through minions to make it easier for, to gank. Purple aspect not still not used a whole lot. And uh, obtaining favor. Raptor now grants three favor to the entire team when slain. It used to be you would have to be somewhere in the pit. Uh, Prime Heal, and it used to be, I think it was two favor before. Prime Helix now grants two favor to the entire team when slain. I think it used to be one. First turret will now grant one favor to the entire team when destroyed. Um, five kills assist on the enemy heroes will grant one favor. Killing 25 minions will grant one favor. I don't quite know how I feel about this. I liked that the Raptors was a team-wide event. Like, Offlaner needed to rotate over and help the team take the Raptors. Now he doesn't need to rotate or he or she, whoever you're playing, they can just stay in off lane and they'll still get favor from the Raptor kill. On the other side, it did feel bad. If you were running interference for your team, if you were up for far ahead and pushing forward and getting the enemy team to focus on you instead of going to that Raptor pit and your team would get the Raptors, they would all get that favor. You wouldn't get nothing because you weren't close to the Raptor pit, even though, Technically, you were helping secure that Raptor kill or, or Prime kill or what have you. So some ups and downs to this. I think there's probably more positives than negatives with this change. Shrines. All shrine buff durations are reduced from 90 to 60 seconds. And the gold shrine, the gold per minion, reduced from 15 to 10. Green shrine, base health regen, increased from 1.5 to 2. But health regen per minute reduced from 0.25 to 0.20. I don't understand. Uh, base mana regen reduced from... 2.5 to 1, mana regen per minute reduced from 0 0.20 to 0 0.10. Okay, so yeah, it's just a reduction across the board for the green shrine and just a reduction to the buffs across the board for all the shrines. This is a good change. The shrines are 
whoever can get the shrines in lane is who dominates that lane. The you get you have the two blue buffs on either side of mid lane. If one mid laner can secure both blue buffs, or your jungler secures one blue buff, you secure the other blue buff. You just dominate your lane because you get increased XP, and that leads you to snowballing and out leveling people in fault is a big deal. You get a lot of stats from leveling, so you you end up just dominating your lane if you get that first buff. Same with green buff. You get green buff in the off lane, you're going to dominate the off lane because you have all that health regen You could and, and mana regen. You can spam abilities to harass the enemy off laner and all the while regening health. So the, the shrines, I think, are a little too strong right now. Hopefully this brings them back in line so they're not as effective. You do want to be rewarded for going out of your way to take these shrines. It takes a lot to bring these shrines down. It's not like the old river buffs where you just three shots and they're done. You actually have to put some time in and, and effort into taking these shrines. So you do need to feel rewarded for that, but I think the reward was a little too much. Hopefully this helps out. Heroes, Boris, his RMB basic attack damage percentage per basic attack reduced just across the board. And Rocket Slam, remove the bonus damage from missing maximum health. That Rocket Slam is his actual ultimate. Um, whenever you were missing health, and the tar it, it dealt damage according to how much health you were missing and how much health the target was missing. Now it just deals flat damage, apparently. Anything to nerf Boris is good. Boris is an absolute beast right now in the game. He's been a beast for a while. I know a lot of you wanted me to do an Honest Hero overview for Boris. I did one. I did one a couple months ago. And the things I said in that Honest Hero overview a couple months ago very applicable even today so boris anything the he's going to be hard to balance because i gave him three ultimates and a basic ability <laughs> is, is what he has really so it's going to be very hard to balance him i played him off lane the other day and absolutely dominated with him and i'm not that good so if i can dominate with a with, with a character in a lane that i don't normally play there's probably something wrong with that hero it's probably not my skill <laughs> Gadget, base movement speed increased from 540 to 550. Mana cost reduced on her anti-personnel mine, her Q, her sticky mine. Mana cost reduced uh, just across the board. Cooldown reduced from 10 to 8 seconds at all levels. Gadget needs some help. I really like Gadget. I loved her in Paragon. But in Fault, I'm, I'm sorry Gadget mains, but she is garbage. She just does not stack up to any of the other mid laners. She, she's just... I don't, I don't know. Hopefully this will help her out a bit. I think she just needs more damage on that sticky mine or the radius needs to be increased or something. I don't know what to do with her, but uh, right, she, she needed this buff. She, she did need this buff. And um, I like to see people get buffed other than others get nerfed. However, what we're going to move on to next is Gideon. Void Breach, his right mouse button, his straight line shot of a comet instead of pulling it out of the air. The base damage reduced at earlier levels, just across the board. Um, well, it's not, well, at earlier, not across the board, but at earlier levels, it's decreased. It still maxes out at 280. And the explosion radius reduced by 20%. Much needed change. Uh, Gideons were just leveling the crap out of their, their right mouse button and uh, just smacking the crap out of you with very little skill. It didn't take much to aim this and hit somebody, and it did dealt a significant amount of damage in the early game fell off late game you're you're pulling the rock out of the sky still did way more damage late game but early game gideon was kind of uh being a lane bully with his right click so hopefully this will help out a little bit maybe this will also bring gadget back up in line by bringing gideon down a little bit belica is still head and shoulders above any other mid laner as far as i'm concerned so kind of surprised that i didn't see any changes to belica Greystone, Fiery Swords, his Q, his uh, duration increased from 4 to 5 seconds, and that increases the total damage. Power scaling increased from 96% to 120%. Assault the Gates, his RMB, his jump, adjusted the leap so that Greystone can now vault over more terrain. Uh, great. Uh, Greystone is, he's just mediocre right now. He's not, you're never mad if you see somebody pick Greystone offlane. But you're never all that happy about it either. It's always like, oh, I guess that guy doesn't know how to play all planes. So he just picked Greystone kind of thing, you know. But hopefully this will mm, give give more skilled players a little more incentive to play Greystone. Especially especially the leap. That's the only way Greystone really had to outplay others was that, with that leap. 
and being able to traverse terrain with it. If he can traverse even more terrain with that leap, good stuff. Murdoch, base health reduced from 570 to 540. Health per level reduced from 93 to 87. Much, much needed change. Um, in my honest hero overview of Murdoch, I did say that he's like, like I said, scale faster than scale your health faster than steel on Murdoch. That was true. Murdoch, for whatever reason, had a ton of health, made him a little bit better than other carries, and really nice to see them addressing this and fixing it. Maybe Sparrow and uh, Twin Blast and Grim can get a little more time to shine now. And Judgment of the Law, his passive, his Wee Woos that make him uh, run faster towards low health enemies. The radius has been changed to just 6,000 at all ranks. So, whatever. Narbash, Song of My People is E, his speed boost. Mana cost increase from whatever. It just increased across the board. Uh, this is probably a good good fix. You really haven't had to manage your mana all that much with Narbash. And I think that's a mechanic that should be in play for a support. You need to be able to need to want to have to keep your eye on your mana. And you weren't you didn't have to do that with Narbash so much. So now this will help out with that a little bit. I like the change. Uh Steel, his shield bash which is his bonk uh, base damage increased just across the board. Energy power scaling increased from 30% to 60%. So uh, great change. Um, this is going to make him a little more fun to play, I think. You can like build an all energy power steel and just blast people with, a, with, with his ultimate and then a bull rush and then a bonk. It's going be, it's gonna, it's gonna to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. And his shield crash, the base damage for that has also been increased across the board. So that adds to it now. So you got the option of building steel real tanky, or you can just go full ability damage steel and <laughs> smack people around. Twin Blast, his ventilate, his uh, ultimate ability, second attack damage percentage reduced from whatever. I don't know why they had to nerf Twin Blast. I don't see a lot of them. Maybe because it's, I'm at lower levels of gameplay maybe at higher levels twin blast was wrecking but whatever i don't really see this being a huge change to twin blast but uh yeah that that's it for all the fault patch notes i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did hit that like button subscribe if you haven't already but for now this is the mangoose signing off you guys have a good one mangoose